Welcome to Black Belt Beauty Radio, a podcast fueled by a passion to support your journey in developing your most beautiful and optimal performance in life. Each episode is driven with the intention to elevate your mind. When we elevate our mind, we elevate our life. So get ready. It's time to rise. It's official. No. <laughs> Done. All right. That was quick. <laughs> that was quick. Peter, I'm so psyched to be here with you. Um, truly, this is feeling very cosmic. You know, my best friend, Carrie Walsh Jennings, connected us. But with another funny backstory, I just gave you one. Um, but one where, you know, it came down to us being connected. I've been following you for some time now, and you were on my mind in terms of, I, oh, I'd love to have a conversation with him on the podcast. And, you know, it was sitting up there, sitting up there. And then um, it would be a couple months later that, you know, Carrie was like, hey, I think it would be great for you guys to connect and have a conversation. I was like, oh my gosh, he was on my list. So it's it's that fun, you know, I call it cosmic mm-hmm. when you're brought together, fused, um, feeling yeah. like you're supposed to me. And, you know, it's been really fun because I've been connected, like I said, with your work for some time now. But I have to say, and I want to say this to our audience, (laughs) I've been in a rabbit hole of you for the last Mm -hmm. several days. And it's been so not only just fun and, you know, elevating to mind and heart, but it's you, you have an energy that's very soothing to the nervous system. So I just want to go ahead and say this before we even get down into everything that we're going to get down in. Like for anybody who wants to love on their nervous system, just go into a Peter Crone <laughs> rabbit hole. <laughs> and I promise yes. you will just feel so grounded into your heart. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And it's something that I've heard as a beautiful reflection before. And that people find either my voice soothing or the words that I use just sort of there's a resonance that people might sort of have heard something similar before, but it kind of strikes them in a different way that helps them have a few ahas. It allows them to breathe a little deeper and have a bit more peace of mind. So yeah, I'm glad to hear that the same is true for you and Absolutely. that I was your personal alarm at 523 this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to tell that story to Carrie. It just, it was so interesting. Well, I'll just share it for the audience because it was so fun. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I, um, I, I, I was listening to a podcast of yours um, prior to going to bed, and I all of a sudden at, at five twenty three was woken up by your voice. Five twenty three. For those of you who don't know already, it's a uh, sequence. It's a. It's my birthday, and it's it's how I framed the sequence of numbers as a point of alignment and um, a kiss from the universe. So I I literally woke up to Peter's voice. Grab my phone. It's five twenty three. I screen grabbed it. I saved it, and so it's essentially like waking up to your voice in this point of alignment with a kiss from the universe on the day that we're podcasting. <laughs> And this is uh, not an I, alarm. I sense, <laughs> no, 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 no. This is far from alarming. Hopefully it's quite soothing. <laughs> I, I see the potential for a new app here. The uh, Kiss from the Universe, Kiss from Peter Crone morning alarm. <laughs> exactly. You get, to, you get to customize the way that I speak as you wake up. Like, oh, good morning, darling. Are you ready for a spectacular day? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> get your you. ass out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> uh, all of it. Oh my goodness. I love it. It was a beautiful way to wake up and I'm so excited. Um, there's so much to talk about. You know, I, I, I've I, learned a lot about you. Um, I know we're just meeting, so you probably don't know a lot about me. Um, I think, you know, for our audience, for those who know you and I, this is already going to be really fun for them because, and I say this with humility and also a lot of just confidence and just really appreciation that you and I, our messaging is so aligned in so many ways. Like we'll dive into some really particular things actually. Um, yeah. um, you know, you're, I, I frame you as a logophile. Like I love that language is such a big thing to you. Um, yeah. It is very much for me too, as a writer, as a speaker, but um, before we even get into that, there's something that I really wanted to start with, which is to share with you one of my top three core values. Sure. Autonomy, personal mm-hmm. autonomy. So mm-hmm. this is 
not just autonomy in terms of, you know, somebody not being able to rule me, right? I'm the ruler of myself, but actually autonomy within my own self to allow myself to be fully expressed as my authentic self, because this is to me where true freedom is. When we are, when we suppress our authentic self, then we're actually not being autonomous. Like we're, we're living in a, you know, yeah. Yeah. So I know that freedom is your product, right? Mm-hmm. So yep. I, I wanted to ask you, you know, two parts. Number one, why is freedom your product? And and what do you mean exactly by that? And then I'm so curious to know, what was your process of getting to this sort of golden nugget that is your product that is freedom? Okay. That could take the whole hour. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, firstly, I just, I want to give our friend Kerry a shout out. She's a sweetheart and I just love her dearly. And I love that you're as close as you are and, uh, that she introduced us, you know, she's come into my life sort of again through the, the, the infamous world of the gram and, you know, she reached out, she was a fan of my work and then vice versa. And we've got to meet a few times, which is beautiful. And she's just such a special soul. So I, you know, really want to just acknowledge that. Um, So, yes, freedom. Um, What does that mean? How did I get there? Why is that one of my main products? I think, you know, I can get pretty deep and I love the sort of the the shared passion for going down rabbit holes, whether it's Peter Crone's rabbit hole. And I thank you for taking the time to listen to my work. But um, I, I assert that as human beings, we're here to break free. Right, that this particular construct, this paradigm of planet Earth and the experience of being human is the mechanism through which we get to transcend and reconcile the constraints that we arrived with. Right. Mm-hmm. So most people are playing the human game. And what does that mean? That you know, you'd like to find a partner, settle down, maybe have a family. If you're an entrepreneur, you start a business, you want to make some money, you want to get some followers, you want to have some status in the world, or whatever it is. Not nothing wrong with that. But really, to me, it's very ancillary and it's secondary and tertiary to the fact that actually what you're here for is to recognize your own divine nature, right? And that can sound very poetic, but the the realization I had was that at a very young age, I was, like most people, unaware of, I was oblivious to the fact that I was playing the human game because I was confined by those blind spots that... I was just, you know, I was blind too. I didn't know that I was living in a world of I'm not good enough or a sense of insecurity, inadequacy, and predominantly a world of scarcity that most people live from. Then by virtue of life introducing me to the right circumstances, the right people, I got triggered and I had my opportunity to transcend the constraints that I was previously oblivious to. And then I had this incredible cascade of the feeling of liberation that went through my body. To go back to your point about the nervous system, I was Mm -hmm. for sure in fight or flight, but I didn't know I was in fight or flight. So it doesn't occur as a threat response or that I'm in any way just trying to survive in life. It's just life, right? Um, And then I realized that actually there was an entirely different experience of being human which I put under the auspices of being free, free from the previous constraints that I was oblivious to. So for a lot of people, you go up to Joe Blow on the street and say, hey, I'll give you freedom. It it probably would sort of occur to them as like, well, first of all, are you smoking crack and who the hell are you to tell me that you can give me freedom? (laughs) Because they think that they are free, right? So that's the, the sort of the 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 beauty of the game but also the frustration of the game is that most people don't know what they don't know and for that reason they're just trying to make it you know it's like if only i had a bit more money or i lost a bit more weight or i could you know get in a, a promotion and then i would be fine and there's this sort of illusion that the happiness that people crave is in some distant future or hopefully not too distant but it's out there somewhere right like you know one day when And that becomes an exhausting proposition because there's this illusion of you're becoming something or you're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. And what people don't realize is you're not actually getting anywhere. You're always where you are. And who you think you're becoming is usually a reaction to who you think you already are that you don't want to be. Mm -hmm. So I downloaded a lot there, but Mm -hmm. um, you can always rewind. Uh, (laughs) So. (laughs) Freedom is basically from all of that madness, right? It is the, the, 
renunciation of the game of survival that I would assert is the human predisposition, like the primordial imperative of any mammal is to survive. Yeah. And and then within the human compartment of that survival is also to be right, mm-hmm. right? Like I want to be right about my own inadequacies, insecurities and inadequacies, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the, the realm of scarcity. And so what happens is people have this self-sabotaging tendency. They tend to fulfill on the very things that they're asserting they're trying to get away from. Yeah. And so freedom really speaks to the disconnect from that whole, that realm of survival. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is literally, without sounding, you know, grandiose or poetic, it's literally a different experience of what it means to be human. It's an entirely different world where I'm no longer in the world of suffering and survival, where I'm trying to get somewhere and become someone. Mm-hmm. And I'm under the impression that my happiness and my success is in the future. Rather, it's the collapsing of time, which is a term I love to use. And it is the complete integration of where I am, who I am, with full acceptance of my true divine nature. Yeah. How's that? (laughs) Nailed it. Um, (laughs) No, that was so beautiful because I know, I know these are big questions, but I I know that you were so capable of bringing us into an answer, um, you know, and and, and in a very, um, yeah, just perfect way, the way you did it. And something that's coming to my mind right now that when you talk about, you know, freedom the way that you just did and these constraints, you know, I feel that usually what happens is, is that we get programmed, these paradigms, you know, start to, to, to live inside of us from, from early on, right? Everyone has a different past and everyone's getting hit with, you know, different challenges, um, you know, myself included my childhood and, you, you so you come out kind of free, but then you get these paradigms and these programs that create limiting beliefs, insecurities, and and essentially like these chains, right? That kind of shackle yeah. your your personal freedom. Um, yeah. What would you say? Let me let me say this about myself. Now I don't know why necessarily this has always been the case for me, mm-hmm. but. I've always chosen to operate from my most authentic self. And something that Mm -hmm. I say when I speak about this is that there's discomfort and pain on either side. You choosing to operate loyally to your authentic self or not, right? Because you're going to disappoint people. You're Mm going to, there's going to be a lot that comes with, you know, choosing your authentic self. And there's also going to be a lot of challenge and suffering that can come you know, from, from the opposite, what would you say, um, you know, if you were to support someone in, in maybe like a one, two, three, and I know it's not this easy, but just to give our audience some maybe tactics or something to start with in terms of how to even start thinking about how do I break from a paradigm? How do I break from a limiting belief? Um, especially when maybe you're not even, you, the individual is not even fully conscious because a lot of it is very, you're, 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 it's like a default setting, a program, right? Yeah. Habitual. Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate you sharing. I would have one rebuttal to your statement of you've always operated from your authentic self is what you said yeah i I wouldn't say that i i I appreciate the you know the sentiment of that Mm -hmm. i would assert that that's not true though and to give yourself a little bit more compassion that you know you're 40 plus years or whatever you said and so when you were younger in your teens or whatever you went to you know had to go through Mm -hmm. and relationships that weren't great and Mm-hmm. I love the commitment you have to that, but I think for you, particularly from the energy I'm picking up, if you could have a little more humanity for yourself, so, uh, Peter Crone is, I would assert, you know, at the bow of the boat of self-realization and true in, internal freedom, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I say that not to be arrogant, but I just have done so much work, and I can equally say in the same sentence that I was lost like anybody, you know, in my twenties and I was trying to be someone who I thought I should. So I just dropped that in for whatever it's worth for you and for the audience that they might look up to you and they revere you and like, Oh my God, she's always lived from her authentic self. And that can breed a little bit of feeling of, you know, security or inferiority. Mm -hmm. And I think where we can learn a lot from leaders and people who are teachers Mm -hmm. is to recognize the wounded healer, you know, like, I know the difference I make for millions of people around the world, 
But I think a lot of it is because they can relate to the fact that I, my mom died when I was seven. My dad went to work when I was 17, never came back. Like these are real life human experiences, right? Yeah. So again, I just, it's sort of a- Oh, it's received. You know, no, no, no. Okay, good. It yeah. might seem anecdotal, but I just could no. see you putting too much pressure on yourself if you're yeah. like, oh, I've always lived from my authentic self. And, yeah. you know, in late terms, I'm like, that's bullshit, you know, and I mean it with the most loving Yeah, tone. no, it's all good. You're human and you've done a ton of work, so you're more mature self. Yeah. But what it means is that someone who's listening to this, they're 16, they're 18, they're 23, and they're struggling. Mm -hmm. And if they were here to us wax lyrical about how fucking great we are and we're free, you know, that it's a bit of a disservice, you know, and yeah. I, I just know your commitment to helping people. So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's one thing, but so the, so that, so that is one of the steps, you know, there isn't necessarily a one, two, three with Peter Crohn's work, right? but you know, it's like embrace your humanity, you know, like I think the world, especially now with all of the tyranny and the oppression and the BS that we're being exposed to, there's a lot more room for compassion and kindness. Mm -hmm. And it starts with ourselves. You know, I say we're masterpieces and we're works in progress, right? So whoever you are today, I can look back at my 17-year-old self, dad goes to work, never comes back. And I could now look back and go, oh, well, how did I handle that? And I've never judged myself for like how I process the death of a father unexpectedly. But we could look back at our, you know, different times of our life and say, oh, you know, you're such an idiot. Why did you do that? Or why didn't you get her number? Or why did you say that? Or, you know, we can second guess ourselves to the cows come home. Mm -hmm. And it just it's a disservice. It's like you're doing the best you can at every stage of our life with the awareness you have at that stage of your life. Right. right? So right. It, it's so that's the one thing is to start with is kindness and compassion towards yourself. You're doing mm -hmm. the best you can within the realm of your current state of awareness. Yeah. The second thing is to start to look at what are the consistent woes, right? Like we're going to stub our toe one day. We're going to have menstrual cramps the next. We're going to feel cold and or have a cold another day. And these things are sort of transitory and they're, they're not fun. And we get, you know, down and depressed or worried. And okay, that's part of being human, right? But where your opportunity for real growth and inquiry is, what's the consistent story? You know, is mm -hmm. it in the realm of relationships? Like, why do I struggle? Why do I always pick the douchebags? Or why am I always left alone? Or why do I not feel loved? Or is it around finances? Like, why do I not seem to be fulfilling on my potential? Mm -hmm. Or is it around health? Like, why do I always seem to be sick? Or is it around rejection? You know, why was I the last to be picked for the you know, the football team at school and now like I'm the one who doesn't get the promotion at work or, you know, there's going to be a thread through people's lives. So that's the that's the treasure trove, right? That's the pathway to pursue is like, what's the consistent theme, the story? And then we want to start to look at what is the associated emotion with that? Meaning if, you know, I find the one that was not picked or my friends are getting married and they're having babies and I'm not. And okay, that's the story, but what's it really eliciting as an experience? And in that case, the experience might be something like I'm a failure. I'm not good enough. I'm not who I should be. And it's in that realm of self deprecating narrative, mm -hmm. right? So that the feeling would be of just sadness perhaps, you know? And so we want to start to look at that and then we can, inquire into the validity of what we assert to be true about ourselves because of those circumstances right so if all my friends are getting married and they got kids and all my friends are successful and they've got their own business and i'm still doing nine to five and earning da 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 like okay so what yeah. like you just pointed out facts there's no suffering in facts right reality does not contain suffering all human suffering is a byproduct of our interpretation of circumstance. So the opportunity to get freedom to come back to your question is, look at the consistent theme. What is the story that is eliciting your personal constraint? I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not valued. It's something in, you know, one of those. So it's usually pretty short. It's pretty succinct. And then you get to really inquire into the truth of that fundamental way that you identify yourself. 
And I promise you, it's not a truth. It's how you feel. But feelings, as I tell people, are a lousy indicator of truth, right? Yeah. So just because you feel you're not good enough does not mean that ipso facto you are not good enough. It's just something that's been there forever and you've adopted it as a truth. It's your reality. It's mm -hmm. your personal reality, your personality. Yeah. But what's, you know, like I was literally talking to someone this morning about one of my quotes. I say, who would you be? in the absence of your concerns. So if you remove that constraint, who would you be? And like his response was like, ah, oh, even now I, my shoulders dropped, I feel so much lighter, I feel free. I'm like, there you go, you're getting closer to your true nature. So hopefully that gives a little bit of a blueprint for oh, people to follow. <laughs> it's beautiful, no, it's powerful. You know, I meditate every morning. I have, a, this is a quick story. I have a relationship with highest self, future self. She's my soulmate, she's, everything. Call her my muse, mm -hmm. right? And years ago, I don't remember what I was troubled with when I was, you know, moving into meditation, but channeled the words from her, the message of, hey, Rox, <laughs> that's how she talks to me. Nothing means anything mm -hmm. except the meaning you decide to give to it. Mm -hmm. Nothing means anything except the meaning you decide to give to it. And it was an immediate yeah. emotional neutralizer it's it's it helped me to self regulate and continues to do so because when yeah. the mind starts to you know run and get carried away with things it is that that helps me come back to and it's essentially what you just said so eloquently so beautifully so powerfully it's it isn't necessarily the truth it's just how you were you know perceiving it right yeah yeah, there's the difference between the lens that I view life, which is my personal reality, mm -hmm. and then there's what's present in the absence of that, which I would assert is truth, right? So when, when it's one of my shortest quotes to say, no you, no problem, right? So, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> right? So, you know, every problem, if you notice every problem that you have, you're there. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So that's like so that, you know, if you want like a, like a, a real oh, quick God. access to why you have problems, it's yeah, because you're around. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that so much. That's so good. Yeah. So yeah. That I'm really, you know, in the most loving, compassionate way, I'm not getting rid of people's problems. I'm getting rid of them. Yeah. You know, who thinks they have problems. And that's an entirely different approach, which is, you know, as far as I know, the only person who does that, it's very unique and it's very liberating because there's experts out there who will help you all day and charge your credit cards as long as you're willing to pay mm -hmm. to help you solve your problems. Yeah. But that becomes strategy. It becomes solutions, but nothing's actually changed. It's like changing the window dressing in a storefront, but the back of the store is full of mold and has got rat infestation, you know, whatever. It's like, yeah. okay, it looks pretty out front, but you haven't actually dealt with the core issues of why you get sick, why your relationships don't work, why you don't fulfill on your value or you have the financial revenue that you think you deserve or mm -hmm. all of those things are byproducts of the dis the, the dissonance that's the relationship to your own inadequacies, insecurities and scarcities versus the abundance and the boundlessness of your true essence. So I introduce people to the limitlessness of who they are and then life will catch up at the appropriate time. So for me, people look at my life and they're, dude, like you have such an amazing life and this, and they see Instagram or, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not like doing it to show off. It's just an extension of me and it's showing people what's possible, mm -hmm. but it's not so much that I work hard. You know, people say, oh, you just got to work hard and mm -hmm. I get it. You know, you got to be disciplined is the word I liked, but it's more a frequency. I function from a particular resonance mm -hmm. and then life will meet me there. And if my resonance is inadequacy or some sort of shortcoming or a berating narrative I have about myself, well, life will meet me there too. And, you know, I'll wonder why did that person leave me or why did I not get, not get the interview or why am I feeling like tired and apathetic? And well, that's because that's the frequency I'm associating myself with. Conversely, when I tap into my divine, divine nature, which is boundless, limitless and inherent value, and then life's like, oh, okay, cool. You want to play that game? Then we'll start showing up, you know, miracles that are just kind of effortless. Like I just yeah. was uh, doing a retreat in the UK and it was just one mir miracle after the next, my whole trip to London. It was just insane. And and that's my subjective experience. Yeah. And yet objectively it made perfect sense because, well, why wouldn't I be open to miracles? Yes. So, 
It's so about, good. you know, frequency precedes form is what I tell people. Most people are trying to change form. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, if you shift who you are at the deepest vibration of your true nature, and you can only do that by removing the shackles. And that's that's a process because most people don't even know what their shackles are, right? So we come back to compassion, patience, and kindness. But as you remove those constraints and limitations, you reveal the boundless frequency that is your divine nature and then just like looking in a mirror, life will reflect to you that newfound vibration. Oh, that's so good. I love that you speak on frequency. Uh, so I have a poetry book coming out called Magnetic Feminine. And I nice. often share, thank you. I share um, on my on my Instagram stories, I'll, I'll create, you know, just kind of visual art. And it's it's always about for me, because everything in life, really, it's like frequency and essence. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I really, really connect with your conversations around frequency and and even on my arm, you know, this is a mantra that came to me and I, I don't normally speak about it on the podcast, but it's just too perfect not to insert here. But um, came to me about eight years ago. I am the maestro. The universe is my orchestra. It's written in French. My mm -hmm. life is my symphony. Wow. I. It's pretty special. Beautiful. Like it's thank you. And it but it really that does. That came to you or that's something you read. That's something no. you downloaded. Yeah, I downloaded. I'm the maestro. The universe is my, my orchestra. My and life. My life is my, my symphony. Yeah, ma vie mon symphony. My life is my oh. symphony. So it's essentially saying what you're saying in the sense that like, hey, mm -hmm. the for this is just me and how I feel about it and how I move through my life and really my experience in life and that it's what you are emitting that will yeah. be expanded. And then yeah. this is where, to me, real autonomy actually comes in because then you have, it's this realization or, you know, not necessarily realization for me at this point, but it's this constant reminder that you have agency and that you are actually creating your life. Like, where are you at yeah. right now? And if this doesn't feel good, let's check in and, 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 and you know, ask yourself the questions that, you know, we need to ask ourselves to, to put ourselves back into that frequency that is going to feel good, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Why, let me ask you, why did it come through in French? Is that part of your heritage or do no. you have spirit guides? <laughs> <laughs> My spirit angels just think to in French, <laughs> damn it. I had to learn. <laughs> I don't need, it's a great question. And it was so long ago. I mean, I speak a little French. I I, I actually can understand more than I can speak. I, I lived in Paris for a while and went to school there, artistic um, academy. But yeah, I don't know. It just, it's, it, and I, it's, it's actually, people think it's a tattoo. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Um. It's not. I just write it every single day. And I oh, have, you do? yeah. Wow. And the reason why is because you get a tattoo and it's just on you. And but you for forget me, about it. Yeah. Exactly. But to me, yeah. it's just like I'm coming into these words and, and actually it's a good segue because I, I know that you, you know, you, you, you're, you're all about quotes, beautiful, powerful quotes. You write in quotes yeah. and like, even just, you said, um, frequency. What did you say? Frequency. frequency. Exactly. And yeah. so. I feel I I see I say that words cast spells. That's my yeah. you know, and I have your quotes here because I don't want to ruin them. Words are the <laughs> wardrobe to the soul, yes. and that's one of yours that just uh, I love yeah. because yeah. yeah. Actually, I'm gonna let you expand on that. Why are words the wardrobe to the soul? Well, just like you said, I mean, I love you know that first of all, I love that you generate that quote on your arm every day because it does speak to the power of creation right like we tend to think about when you first fall in love with somebody like they're at the forefront of your mind there's a presence right both in terms of their absence or their presence with you even in their absence you're thinking about them when am I going to hear from them you text them there's an excitement right mm -hmm. and it's a very generative experience of love yeah. and then maybe you get more serious you move in together and before you know it, you're sort of taking each other for granted yeah <laughs> right is this sort of integration, which can have its own, you know, sort of um, experience of love that is perhaps, I, I don't want to in any way belittle it, but, you know, there can be an integration that's also beautiful. Like there's a there's a comfort that can come with that too, right? Like mm -hmm. it's just they're, they're an extension of you. Right. Um, I would never want anyone to be taken for granted. But anyway, you get the point. Yes. Um, so as it relates to, you know, wardrobe, uh, words being the wardrobe for the soul. And I love that you say words cast spell. And that's to me why they say it's it's spelling, right? You're you're spelling something. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm sure you know the the 
um, the translation of abracadabra, the Hebrew translation, like the magic, you know, when someone says abracadabra, the actual translation is as I speak, so I create. Mm, that's what Carrie's favorite is abracadabra. She yeah, loves it. yeah. Isn't that amazing? yeah, yes. <clears throat> so um, to answer your question about my quote, like why that occurred to me is I realized that our divine nature, our true essence is boundless. Like it's really the quintessential expression of pure possibility. It is the infinite. It is the quantum. And then so that vibratory state of pure potentiality gets expressed in form by virtue of how we collapse quantum into the relative. Right. Mm -hmm. But what is the relative? Well, it's how we relate. And how do we relate? We relate through language, right? So words are the wardrobe for the soul, meaning that the words create the container, the form in which that which is boundless starts to manifest. Mm -hmm. So literally, as you get up in the morning, you create your own existence. You literally writing it on your arm, which is beautiful. For somebody else, they're picking out their wardrobe, whether it's a uniform that they have to quote unquote fall in line with because that's what's expected at their place of employment or somebody else, they're a fashionista. And so the way they express with their wardrobe gives rise to a different experience of their potentiality, right. excuse me. But ultimately the way that we relate to ourselves in our identity and our personas is with these deep constructs that are really formed in the subconscious with this languaging, no different than code on a piece of, uh technology like the laptops that we use like they have programming in that give rise to the software that we interact with mm -hmm. so the potentiality of an operating system we could argue is boundless depending on its speed and its capacity obviously technology evolves and you buy a laptop today it has a, a far greater possibility than one that we would have bought 20 years ago right. nonetheless that potentiality whatever it is gets expressed through the languaging that is used in terms of let's say you open up itunes you don't open itunes on your laptop and get frustrated that you can't edit your photos right like <laughs> yeah. that would make no sense like because right. you know that's going to be done in adobe illustrator or photoshop right mm -hmm. but both of those programs they have completely different functionality mm -hmm. wardrobes but mm -hmm. based on the language that was used to create them yes so a good coder could go in there and if you didn't like the interface of say photoshop and you wanted it to be a particular customized style a good programmer could go in there and make it to your bespoke choice right mm -hmm. so likewise for me you could say i'm sort of a programmer of the subconscious i'm coding people's identities mm -hmm. by revealing what's already there that's dysfunctional why are you getting sick why are you not earning the livelihood you think you warrant why are your relationships not full of love and passion well it's because of your current program so if you want to have the abundance and the infinite experience of your true divine nature, then we have to remove the confined programming and replace it with what actually is less of a replacement and more of a revealing of the inherent program that's there already. So hence, that. words of the wardrobe for the soul. And unfortunately, most people are wearing pretty shitty clothing. <laughs> <laughs> No offense. I fucking love it. <laughs> and, and I'm being quite literal. People have <laughs> shitty fashion taste. <laughs> oh, um, and as it relates to the mind, then yeah, they absolutely have atrocious wardrobe choices. But yeah. <laughs> no, walking it's... around in that tight, like wife beater called, I'm not good enough. It's like, okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you get the point. <laughs> I love that about you because it's so, everything is so deep and it's, it's you know, it's profound, but there's always a lightheartedness about you that I really appreciate, um, a playfulness, um, because it's also very real too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the best description was, uh, <laughs> in UK, the financial times, you know, and I'm just quoting them, but they said, you know, meeting Peter Crone is like meeting Buddha, Einstein and Austin Powers all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that is, that's the fucking triple threat okay <laughs> right yeah because you cover everything you've got the yes. you've got the spiritual with buddha you've got the principles of physics and relativity with einstein and don't forget to not take it all too fucking seriously baby and let's shag yeah. you know, like, oh. <laughs> well it's you know i you know i people always oh you're 44 like what the fuck i'm like well yeah i'm 44 years strong there's no, right. I don't feel, how old do you feel? I don't feel old at all. And that's not like me just trying to defy the fact that, you know, I'll be out of here at one point. No, we all will. Mm -hmm. It's truly the energy, the frequency and my 
essence is that yeah. of an opened, playful, like cartwheels in the fucking sand kind of woman, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I I say that because, you know, the the triple threat and the Austin Powers and being funny and lighthearted, I think that is, you know, we can sit here and dive deep, deep, deep. But if you if you're constricted in, in the heart, if you're not open to allow yeah. that, you know, childlike essence to also be, you know, a part of who you are and to move through life with, well, there's a glitch in the system from my perspective. Yeah. And you know? I've always said, you know, and I've heard it before, paraphrased perhaps in different ways, but if ever you're in front of a teacher, a spiritual teacher, a guru, or whatever they're proclaiming, proclaiming themselves to be, and they don't have a sense of humor and it's all about instruction and what you're supposed to be doing and the divine. And I'm like, just run, you know, because because you're just gonna, yeah, you're in a cult. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it's like I one of my favorite attributes about myself is like my childlike heart. You know, it's like I'm the biggest goofball, and yeah, I can wax lyrical about the most profound shit all day if that's what you want to do, but you know, like I also am going to make sure that I just have a great deal of joy as I do it. Yeah. Well, I think that there's a, there's a deep energy of just, you, you are who you are and, and you know what you know. And, and it's, 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 it feels very effortless because I feel that when you're efforting that constricts that mm -hmm. openness and that childlike, you know, essence that we're talking about. Um, yeah. so I appreciate that about you. I want to dive into, um, some other quotes because they're just way too good. Um, Please. Uh, okay, this one. And then it's, I have to say, like the connection here, um, I created a guided journal called You Are the Path. Okay. And yeah. I'll backstory that later, another conversation. When I heard you say the seeker is the sod. Yeah. That to me, I mean, can you, it was just like, oh, my heart. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Can you please unpack that? Because it's so powerful. It's so potent. It is. And you're actually the first person, the first host to actually bring that one up because really? it is pretty damn profound, which speaks volumes about you and your sensitivity or your ability to see. Um, yeah. When that hit me, how can I unpack this in a way that is comprehensible for people? Um, you know, the metaphor I use, because I think having visuals helps people, it's kind of like how it occurred to me, it's a dark night and there's a lighthouse and the lighthouse has, it's got its arc of the beam that, you know, sort of transcends the, the horizon as it goes around. But the lighthouse has consciousness, right? For the sake of the analogy. And its question is, as the, the light, as the beam is going around, it's aware of the movement of the beam. And its question is, where is that light coming from? Right. So that really speaks to, as an analogy, the seeker is the sort, meaning we, as we identify ourselves, not in the persona that we've just obviously spoken to at quite length, but like the essence of who I am, whether you call it consciousness, the absolute, the divine, whatever word floats your boat, it doesn't really matter. They're all pointers, right? Because who we are is prior to language. So the essence of who we are, in this case, you know, poetically, metaphorically, is light, like the lighthouse. Mm -hmm is the consciousness that actually is seeking its own experience of itself. So for a while, the lighthouse is like, it's, it's using the light to try and see where's this light coming from. That's the sort of the Zen Cohen part of the analogy. It's like, and yet not realizing, oh, I'm the one casting the light. <laughs> so likewise, the seeker is the sword. That which I'm looking for, most people are under the impression what they're looking for is, a few more zeros at the end of their bank account. They want the six pack. They want the tight buns. They want the right partner, the bigger home, whatever it is, right? That's the, uh, mm. the illusion of seeking. Yeah. But all of those points to really the experience. People don't want $10 million. They might say that's what they want. They want the experience. They're under the impression that will give them, which in this case comes back to my word of freedom or the ability to pursue and explore life, which would give them a sense of happiness or joy, that, so they're actually after an experience. That's what they're seeking. But the experience that they're seeking is their true nature. And hence the seeker is the sort, right? So we are the very thing that we're looking for. Yeah. 
And it is only through the tapestry of this paradigm of life, through the medium of the external human experience, that hopefully one day, you know, my work expedites that, people realize that versus getting caught in the manifest world of materialism and thinking that what they want is out there somewhere. No, out there is purely the catalyst to reveal the experience you think out there will give you, which inherently is who you already are. <laughs> Nailed it again. <laughs> <laughs> mic drop moment. No, sorry, mic the, drop. I think you're supposed to say that. It doesn't sound so humble when it comes to me. <laughs> but that was pretty I know, good. I I, I'm going to have to go back and listen yes. to that. <laughs> that was really good. No, it is so, so good. You know what? I, it's it's another thing that I just, I love about all your work in general. And it's it's really, you know, it's, it's a lot of what I express um, through my own work where it's like the inner shapes the outer. You know, we've mm -hmm. been groomed and, and society has done this, you know, focus on building your business, focus on the relationship, focus on getting the money, focus on getting your education. Yeah. Okay. Fuck. All that's great. It's all important, but everything yeah. has always been pointed away from self. Like don't it's it, so, and I find that I, be, I believe, I don't just find, I know, I know that, you know, it, the job doesn't make me who I am. The relationship right. doesn't make me who I am. Roxanne makes these things, right? Yeah. So who is Roxanne? Yeah. And what is that relationship that I have with myself? Because I feel like that's, you know, that's yeah. ultimately how you're going to create a life of fulfillment when you get into this really loving relationship with yourself is how yeah I, that's yeah. the to me that's the quintessential expression of success most people success is a narrative that we've just agreed upon collectively as a society to say it looks a certain way and then people chase that proverbial horizon and they wonder why they feel that they're not successful well you can't you can't fulfill on an illusion which by the way is constantly moving anyway because you know success gets redefined whereas real success for me is like unveiling, revealing, experiencing your true nature, then it doesn't really matter who you are in the world or what you're worth in the world or what you have in the world, meaning the manifest world. It's like, I am, you know, like, that's it. I am. And like, for most people that you are what? Like, no, 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 I am. Yeah, I know. But you are what? No, no, you're missing it. I am. That's it. Period. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> and that's got everything in it, you know, and it's like, <laughs> that that takes a lot for people to digest you know and then anything on top of that is just an extension and it's a it's a facade it's going to be playful like i am the mind architect i know i'm not the mind architect that's the word i use it's appropriate it's a locator in time and space it allows people to find me mm -hmm. but it's not who peter crone is a much more accurate descriptor of who i am is i'm just a space of pure possibility unconditional love and a lot of play, you know, that that would be more accurate than I'm the mind architect. You That's know? a but fucking triple threat. <laughs> right. That really is. Love, possibility and play. I mean, you know, so um, that that is the seeker being the sort like and I've discovered that that that's those are my inherent qualities. That's innate. I don't have to try and get those out there somewhere. And. Whilst I'm in physical form as a human, there's certain things to take care of as it relates to my vehicle, my mind and my body, yeah. which allows the access to my true essence to be, you know, more effortless. If I'm confined in beliefs of inadequacy or I've got grievances or resentment towards my history or parents or if my body is failing me, then, you know, it's, it becomes infinitely more difficult to experience the true limitless joy of my soul because there's just heavier shadows, you know? So yeah. I take care of myself, not so much because I want to look good or impress people, but it just makes the veil between the manifest version of me in physical form and the real essence of me beneath that. It makes that a lot thinner and easier to access. That's all. Totally. I love that so much as a woman who's very, you know, health is number one for me. Um, like I said before, I'm an athlete, not professionally, but, you know, I live yeah. that life of an athlete. I train and I take care of my body. And ultimately, and I know the difference. I didn't grow up with all organic foods and, you know, the whole thing. Um, right. I've had McDonald's and fucking all that stuff. Um, I know the difference of when your physical vessel is not in its highest state of health versus when it is and what you're able to access within yeah. yourself, you know, when, when you are in that higher state of health. Um, so I love yeah. that you, 
I love that you bring that. In. I love using analogies again. And it's like, listen, if you had, God forbid, like a tumor that had to be removed or any kind of like elective surgery that you were going into and they showed you the surgery like facility, the room that you were going to be in and you could see the nurses and the doctors, you walk in there and there's like in the corner, there's like to use your example, crushed, you know, McDonald's boxes and there's like a half spilled can of coca-cola on the floor and you look over at the instruments the scalpels and tweezers and they're all rusty and kind of crooked and you know the the surgeon's got his mask half off and he looks like he's stoned or he's drunk and you know you wouldn't feel very good going into that surgery no. <laughs> you know <laughs> it's like uh do you have a different room is there another hospital and another zip code or something so you know, it's like using that in terms of like the precision with which we want to create an environment that pulls for the immaculate sort of this this revealing of the the divine and the impeccable nature of our soul. Like it's it's it warrants having an environment of mind, body, and your personal space that is inspiring for that. You know, like it, it's why for me you go to an event like i used to do triathlons for fun and you know you go to something like that or you go to the olympics or you just watch it on tv whatever like there's a natural calling of inspiration for what's possible by virtue of what other people have done that maybe we haven't and usually they've done it for years maybe decades that shows a lot of discipline dedication that can be inspiring and so likewise with spiritual work you know if people are going to go and get drunk or they smoke a ton of weed or they're on medications again no judgment of any of this but your the the faculties that you're trying to use to discover your true nature are already compromised and so it's no different to a surgeon who's trying to open you up with a blunt spoon versus this beautiful latest technology scalpel you know or some god forbid robotic like technology you know it's like you know which one's going to do a better job. So when people want to discover my experience of joy, of liveliness, of energy, of freedom, of possibility that I live from, you know, the first place I invite them to look at is like, what are you doing that I don't do that is an absolute inhibitor to you accessing the pristine, like limitless nature of your birthright given spirituality, right? Like, so if you're going out, you're eating late, you're digesting heavy foods, you're not sleeping well, you drinking a ton of alcohol, like you hate your partner, you hate your boss, like, and it's going to take you a long time, yeah. <laughs> you know, to discover like true inner peace from that place. So I, 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 people think that a lot of this work is super profound and it is, you know, it's like any kind of refinement, like Michelangelo's, sort of sculpture of David, which is a masterpiece that millions of people have gone to visit, that was carved out of a big lump of marble, right? Yeah. And when he was interviewed and asked, like, how did you create this masterpiece of David? He said, I didn't. I just chipped away everything that wasn't David. And it's such a beautiful reflection of this dissolution process that I take people through and why I'm using it in context of what I was sharing is, yeah, at the beginning, there's some big blocks that you have to get rid of, right? Like he's when you look at a big lump of marble, he's not working on the refinement of like around the eyes and the eyelids and right. the eyelashes, right? Like I, I'm, you know, I'm like three foot of marble away from that. Yes. And what that might look like in someone's life is what would it look like if you quit alcohol? What would it look like if you stop eating GMOs and dog shit fast food? You know, that might be a big block for you. Like in Peter Crone's life, the refinement is like, yeah, I sit in a hyperbaric for an hour, three or four times a week. Like, I'm not a professional athlete, but I treat myself like one. That's a refinement process, right? So there are different levels to the the re, the revealing of your true nature. And sometimes, as I said, we need patience and compassion to begin with, which is through no necessarily fault of your own, you've adopted some pretty bad habits. And mm -hmm. let's try and get rid of some of those before we get into the the real nitty gritty of like the subtleties of accessing your your boundless nature. You know, uh, it's like yeah. anyway. No. You get the <laughs> no, 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 no. I love the point. It really speaks to so much of what I, this whole podcast of mine is about because there's so much low hanging fruit <laughs> available, yeah. right? For Absolutely. people to feel Meet fucking people where better. they're at. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you just, you just, you took us on a journey that was so perfect to really explain, like, hey, 
let's look at that before we start trying to do even the deep, deep, deep work. Yes. Cause, and then let's see where this, you know, so. And that's where a lot of people fall short and they get like, they get, you know, guilt and shame where they're like, oh shit, I fucked up. And it's like, well, no, you're trying to do a very refined form of meditation when right now the best thing you could probably do is just throw out a bunch of shit from your closet. Yes. You know, it's like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Right. It's like, I love golf, you know, and it's like, I'm at a level now that I can compete pretty well and, you know, low handicap. But if someone, if I take a friend to the range who's never played before, they, they don't know what a groove is. They're not worried about the fact that their grooves are full of mud. Whereas I know that's going to compromise my ability to spin the ball. They just want to make contact. Yeah. You know? like they're, they're at that level. I'm like trying to fade it or I'm drawing it or I'm putting a bit more like that's a refined. Then you go to work with some of my athletes who are pros like they're just at another level of consciousness as it relates to what they're doing with a golf ball. Yes. But somebody who's starting or somebody who's played maybe for six months, you know, it's like, oh, wow, I realized that the clubs that I have don't actually fit my body. Okay, that's part of the evolution of your journey. Yeah. But to begin with, they were fine because you were just trying to learn some of the basic mechanics. The same yeah. is true of spiritual evolution. And, and that's where we can bring a lot more, as I said, patience with each other and ourselves that you're where you're at. Mm -hmm. And Peter Crone has done this for many decades and mm -hmm. you could look at him and go, holy shit, this guy, da, da, da. And I'm like, yeah, but I might go ice, ice skating with you and you've done it a bunch and I haven't and I fall on my ass and I look like an idiot because that's <laughs> where I'm at. Right. <laughs> yeah, no. And I love that you speak about compassion so much because I actually frame compassion, self-compassion as a high performance tool because it really yeah. allows you to be a fucking human. People talk about patient, patience. I'm like, well, if you actually... If you if you invite more self compassion in the picture, you're actually going to get patience at the same time, because yep. you know, like I, you know, um, a child trying to learn something, it's like you're going to be compassionate with the child because, and and in that moment, you're giving you, there's patience there as well, right? You're not going to be like, hurry up, like why why can't you walk? And it's, sometimes, yeah, that's actually that's <laughs> true. That's parent. true. My brothers are like, yeah, no, to the kid, no, no, but it's it's so true, and I just I feel that self-compassion gives you space to ultimately fucking learn. Like we're yeah. just gathering information, gathering information. And, and what really can separate us as individuals is what we do with that information. Right. But I love yeah. that you speak to compassion so much because you're a badass. You are all about human performance potential. And I think sometimes, and I know this even in my own world, you know, they see me fucking training jujitsu, this, that, the edgy woman. <laughs> and at the same time, Compassion is always a part of the conversation with me. It's, yeah, for sure, I can see that. Can you? Well, thank you. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah. I know you spoke to it a lot already in 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 this conversation, but I just I think that receiving it from you is very important for for so many reasons. Because again, you know, it could be easy to look at someone like you and and you you know, very very just powerful, successful. You know what I mean by that. I'm not, I'm yeah. saying no, your it. presence, yeah. your presence holds a lot of power. You, yeah. you, you work with some of the most elite humans in the world. Um, people can translate this um, as, you know, just wouldn't necessarily put compassion into this part of the conversation. Yeah. So I'm drifting. <laughs> No, I appreciate it. I, 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 it's funny because whenever I've maybe anecdotally met with someone for a dinner or I've been at an event and there's a dinner or, you know, you sit down and it's funny how many people become incredibly self-conscious of what they're putting in front in their mouth in front of me. And, and some people might speak to it and they're like, oh my God, like, or they'll see me eat the dessert and they're like, oh my God, that's so good. Peter Crone eats dessert. I'm like, what the hell do you think I'm eating? Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> first of all, I burn a ton of calories because I work my ass off. But yeah. Like, so it's just funny because I'm like, I'm the last person on the planet. You should be worried about what I think about you. There's, you're not going to meet anyone who's less judgmental than me, you know? So it's funny that people might put me on a pedestal and I, I don't think it's by, by any stretch of the imagination, everyone, because now people know that I'm playful, I'm unconditionally loving, but it is funny that we put these, you know, other people in industries of sports, business, entertainment, somewhat on pedestals. And I think one of the reasons that I've had the opportunity to work with so many amazing people is because in the most loving way, I just don't give a shit. You yeah. know, it's like, I know that you're human, you had parents and they probably told you dumb shit and you took it on and you've been fighting it for 30 years. You know, it's like, <laughs> and whoop-de-doo that you make a hundred million deals, you know, and there's millions of fans who love you. Okay, that's great. 
but I'm much more interested in who you are and what you're struggling with. And that's where we can all, you know, meet each other with that kindness, respect. And one of my other quotes, I say, please never become perfect. You'll have no one to relate to, you know, yeah. and the fact that I, I'm generating these quotes is speaking to the fact that I would never want to be perfect. I never see myself as perfect. I'm very human. I love all my flaws and whatever they might be, but they actually no longer are flaws because they're just an integral part of me and they get as much love as the part of me that I like even more. You know, there's a, they're, they're unanimous in terms of my experience of myself. There's nothing better or worse than myself for myself or for anybody else. So that kind of level of compassion and acceptance is so profound. It's all encompassing. To me, that really is the embodiment of love, which is the absence of judgments. It's allowing people to be who they are, where they are, and simultaneously be a stand for whatever they want to create in their life. That's beautiful too. But to just meet people where they are, allow them their own experience, doesn't mean you condone it, doesn't mean you have to agree with it, but that's the skill of listening, mm -hmm. is that people have their own reality and that warrants you know, respect and kindness. I love it. So when's the book coming out? <laughs> all the these damn quotes. Good question and that's probably been around for way too many years. <laughs> There's oh, one of man. way to way to pick up on one of my flaws. <laughs> I had to poke a little. I mean, yeah. you just no. The anticipation is it's it's awesome. Actually, um, good work. Yeah. Uh, you just got all of us like it, you know. I I I so appreciate <laughs> you, and for so many reasons. Um, I want to ask you. Uh, there's we're gonna start to wrap out of here, but um, what's something that's inspiring you right now in your life? Like whether it's something that's creatively inspiring you or just kind of lighting up your heart right now um, that you can share with us. Um, I think a media like real present time is the beauty and the, the awe inspiring impact of the mastermind course that I've just done. Mm -hmm. Like it's the first one I've done and we're now teeing up another one just because of the demand and people are starting to get wind of like what's happening in this first one. But being the first one, just like my, you know, analogy of someone learning golf, you don't know what to do. You're trying to connect. I knew I obviously have a lot to offer and I knew a lot of people were inspired by my work, but I'd never gone through the process of the mastermind. And so to see what has transpired in that space and yeah. what's also come through me as I coach people, because it's a unique dynamic where I'm, working with people in the mastermind mm -hmm. but as i'm working with them i'm teaching everybody else in the mastermind what i'm doing yeah <laughs> right so it's a unique i'm not just coaching i'm coaching people on how i'm coaching right. somebody as i'm coaching them right, right? so it, it it's but it, it really is uh so fulfilling because people have come from all walks of life there's over i think it's like 26 27 countries represented meaning people are getting up in the middle of the night in australia and norway and sweden to be part of this and um that commitment and the excitement they have to just not just wait for the recording they want to be part of the life you know because it's all recorded but um so that really is very fulfilling and inspiring for me right now and i'm very excited uh for the next one sadly i i don't know when this will come out maybe oh it's coming out miss. soon yeah when, okay when's good the well, next... maybe yeah the next one we are the we're, we're sort of starting to talk about it now i think the cart will open in about a week oh um, perfect and then it will be open for about three weeks so if this comes out within a week or two it is. which is ideal okay mm -hmm. great then um yeah so that's that to me right now is what I'm inspired about. And the second one, because albeit the same syllabus, the people change and therefore the stories change and therefore the breakthroughs change, but everybody, you know, gets what they need from that container. Yeah. And to me, it's why we're here as humans is to break free and to learn how to bring that for other people. I love it. I love it. And I love the timing. This is, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm so here to support you and your work. Your voice is Thank so you. important. Your heart is so important being expressed into this world, into this universe. So again, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for your time, for your energy, your frequency, your essence. Um, thank you to my best girl. I, I hope we could do this again. And when I go up to yeah. visit her, maybe then I can come, you know, meet you in real life. I would love that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. And please tell our audience where they can stay connected to you, learn how to get into the mastermind. Sure. Well, thank you for having me. And I just want to like, just extend an acknowledgement to you because 
there's one dynamic which might seem a little bit ethereal for people, but like there's something that happens when I'm on a podcast that really is an extension of the the catalyst of host and me, right? And I know the bandwidth with which I can download, right? And mm -hmm. it's very broad. But depending on the host capacity to either hold space or ask appropriate questions dictates the degree to which I can download. And so based on what we discussed today, it speaks volumes about the space you hold. So I just want to acknowledge you because the things that I got to share today, perhaps I don't always get to share in a podcast. And that's no slight on other podcasts. It's just a different conversation. Right. So I just it speaks volumes about the work you've done. And Thank you. um you know, the container that you are for this conversation. Um, and then to answer your question, um, Instagram is just my name, Peter Crone. Uh, my website is just my name, petercrone.com. Uh, I believe we have Facebook, Peter Crone, the mind architect. Uh, that's about it. Perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Th and thank you for those words. I, I cherish them. I embrace them. My heart deeply receives them. So um, to be yeah. continued. It's fun to be part of your symphony. Ah! Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to make part of this podcast my, I don't wake up by an alarm usually, but. <laughs> yeah, but now the 523 Peter nah. Crone wake <laughs> up. I, I'm already going to get my team to work on that app for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, people. All right, yeah. Peter, thank you so much. Rob, thank you. Oh my goodness. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode, you guys. If you loved it, please share it on your social. Throw it up on your Instagram stories and tag me. I'm at Black Belt Beauty. I am also at Roxy Look, R-O-X-Y-L-O-O-K. I love connecting with you guys. This is a conversation that I want to just continue growing with you guys. So if you feel inspired to hit me up, do so in that space. I always enjoy hearing from you. If you'd like to support this podcast, you can do so by rating it and reviewing it via iTunes. It's such supportive help, you guys. It really helps the visibility of this podcast. So I appreciate and thank you in advance for doing that. And on that note, you guys, I'm signing off with all my love and always looking forward to catching you on the next.